French toast, one of my all-time favorite breakfast foods. But with bread and syrup, it's pretty much just all carbohydrates. I can't be having that. I gotta have some protein in my mornings. The good news for me is that this cinnamon protein waffle French toast has 435 calories and 46 grams of protein. It's one of my secret weapons for cutting. It keeps me full, gives me a good dose of protein, and it takes care of my sweet tooth. Here's how you make it. The first thing I like to do when I make these is to start with the strawberries. Macerating them with a bit of sugar or sweetener while you prepare the remaining ingredients will pull out some of the liquid and create a syrup for your waffles. I measured out about a cup or 100 grams of frozen strawberries and cut them into thin slices. I let these sit on the counter for a few minutes after I got home from the store so they were a bit thawed out. If you need to toss them in the microwave for 20 seconds to soften them up, do so. Place the sliced strawberries into a bowl and add a bit of sugar to help them macerate. I'm going to use one tablespoon or 15 grams of maple syrup. Regular sugar works great as well. Or if you wanted something non-nutritive, I've used stevia in the past and had no issues with the final product. Now set that aside and allow the juices to come out while you prepare your waffles. The recipe used to make these protein waffles is the exact same recipe we've used to make protein waffles and pancakes on this channel in the past. This time we're just going to turn them into French toast. Now you can go about this a couple of different ways. You can make one serving at a time and measure out all the ingredients in small quantities. You can batch prep a giant amount of pre-made waffles to put in snack city in your freezer. Or what I'm going to do today is batch prep the dry mix to keep in my pantry so that I don't have to measure out all the dry ingredients every time I want to make a waffle or a pancake. So to do this, we need some oat flour. It's the number one ingredient of these waffles. Pre-ground oat flour can be expensive to buy at the store because the global elites are still obsessed with wheat. So if you want to make it yourself and save some money, put some rolled oats in the blender. Place a large bowl over a scale and let's get to mixing the dry ingredients. Add in four cups or 400 grams of oat flour, about seven and a half scoops or 250 grams of vanilla whey protein powder, about seven and a half scoops or 250 grams of vanilla casein protein powder, one and two thirds cups or 200 grams of tapioca flour or cornstarch, and then five teaspoons or 20 grams of baking powder. If you wish, you could also do about a teaspoon or six grams of salt. Whisk all that together in the bowl until everything is evenly incorporated. This amount of dry mix will yield you about 20 servings worth of pancakes or waffles. Now the question I know many people are gonna ask is why do I have to use two different kinds of proteins? The answer is because they're two different ingredients. They react differently when mixed with water and cooked. If you try to make pancakes using only whey, they're probably going to end up dry and flat. Using the casein will keep them fluffier and help with moisture retention. You can also just buy a 50-50 blend of micellar casein and whey. That works too. Let this serve as your warning. Do not try to make this using only whey. You see this right here? That says casein. It's in the recipe. Use it. And cut to the comments of somebody saying, I tried making these using only whey and they sucked. Hey, why'd you do that? Told you not to. Are you a dumb? You're a dumb. You've betrayed me. Now with your dry mix ready to go, anytime you want a pancake or a waffle, place a small bowl over a digital scale and to it add a half of a cup or 56 grams of that dry pancake mix. Next, add a third of a cup or 75 grams of plain non-fat Greek yogurt, one fourth of a cup or 60 grams of liquid egg whites, and anywhere between two and three tablespoons or 30 to 45 grams of water to make a batter-like consistency. Stir it all together until the powder is well incorporated into the liquids. Hopefully while you were preparing all that, you had the foresight to start preheating your waffle iron. This waffle iron I'm using here is an eight by eight inch square and it fits the amount of batter in this recipe perfectly. Spray it lightly with a bit of oil and then dump your batter into the center and spread it out across each of the wells. It takes about four to five minutes for me to cook these waffles, but that's gonna depend on the temperature. Unfortunately, my waffle iron does not have temperature control. I plug it in and whatever temperature it's at is what I get. So just keep an eye on yours and pull it out when it's browned and no longer in liquid form. Once it was finished, I pulled it out of the waffle iron and cut it into four pieces for my French toast. Then for the egg wash, place another dish over a scale and add five tablespoons or 75 grams of liquid egg whites, one tablespoon or 15 grams of 2% milk, a half of a teaspoon or two grams of vanilla extract, and then a half of a teaspoon or two grams of cinnamon. Beat that together until well combined. I'm using the liquid egg whites here because they're more macro friendly. It's just straight protein, but you could use a whole egg if you wanted to. Heat a large skillet over medium heat and spray it lightly with oil. From here on out, it's just like making regular French toast. Take your waffles, dunk them in the egg wash, and lay them gently in the pan to cook. With the ridges on these waffles, it's not quite the same as with bread, where if you put it in the egg wash, it's going to saturate pretty quickly. So with the waffles, you might want to give them a little bit of extra time to soak. Once in the pan, I gave my French toast about two to three minutes to cook before flipping it over to the other side to finish off. This won't look like traditional French toast where you get the even brown coloring throughout because of the ridges on the waffles, so it can be kind of hard to tell when you need to flip. A pretty good indicator is when it releases from the pan. So if you were to shake the pan, and the French toast slides around, 
that's a good sign that you've got a crust on the bottom and it's ready to flip. Another good indicator is when the edges look set and no longer soggy. Once they're finished, you can transfer them over to a plate and they're ready to eat. The strawberries we cut up earlier have been macerating in the syrup or sugar for about 10 minutes now, so they should have released a good amount of juices and created something that you can top your waffles with. Pour them over the top, spread them around, and make sure you get all the good syrup that's left at the bottom of that bowl. This part is optional, but if you wanted to add two tablespoons or five grams of fat-free ready whip to the top, it rules. The fat-free stuff is only one calorie per gram and it still tastes awesome. For this whole plate of four pieces of cinnamon protein waffle french toast with the strawberries and whipped cream topping, it's 435 calories and 46 grams of protein. Anytime I'm dieting or trying to cut some fat, these waffles or their pancake cousin enter my eating routine with almost a daily frequency. I'm a dessert person. I need to have a sweet treat pretty much every night, but when I become too much of a fat slob and need to tone it down and lean up, this waffle french toast works perfect as a substitute. I satisfy my sweet tooth and get 46 grams of protein in the process. Sign me up. The recipe is linked below in the description. Check out the video linked here for the freezer version of the waffles. Bye.